and welcome to episode 21 of the Witch in Its podcast. I'm Shy, I'm a witch, and I knit and do other crafty things like hand sewing and embroidery, and I do art and I do all sorts of things, and I like to sit down and talk to you about them sometimes on this channel. So, welcome if you're a new viewer, because there are quite a few of you. Um, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. And yeah, you can probably tell I'm a little bit nervous and um, feeling a little bit awkward because it's been, again, one of those really, really long one and a half month breaks. And I'm very sorry about that. Awfully sorry about that. This, I know I start every episode with saying it's been crazy, but it's been even more crazy than it's, than it's been before the summer. So I'm going to get into that and do a bit of a life update at the end of this video, because there's quite a bit to update you on. Um, but uh, I'm going to start with the nitty and crafty stuff and then get into that later and I'm probably going to do timestamps and stuff for once because it could get a bit heavy. Uh, but anyway, uh, I am here, I am back and holy heck, there's a lot of you! Wow! <laughs> Where did you all come from? <laughs> welcome, very welcome to my channel and I'm so happy you're here. Uh, thank you so much for so, for stopping by and subscribing. Uh, I think last time I filmed, I was about just below 200 or something, and now there's like 300 subscribers, and I'm like, what happened? Am I? No. Why? What? <laughs> but thank you so much, and I hope you'll enjoy this episode and the rest of the podcast and channel. Um, I think maybe, as usual, no script. I was going to do this later today, have a glass of wine and sit down and talk, but and, and like start the day with a shower and stuff because I feel like it, it's my usual hair wash day. Uh, I hope it doesn't show on camera. Uh, so um, I feel a bit gross, but I also know that if I don't do this now, it won't happen and I really don't want like another week to go by because it's like, if I don't sit down and film, it's going to take me like even longer to get to the point of feeling okay to sit down and film because you know it, it, you get this like oh no it's been so long I can't really do it now uh, and it's been so long it's it's going to be awkward to come back and and like the feeling just grows and it gets really overwhelming and uh, like then then six months have gone by and you're like oh hello internet I'm still alive <laughs> so I really wanted to do this. Um, uh, I don't know where I was with that, but that's probably going to be a bit tangents and I'm getting really warm. So I'm going to start with what I'm wearing and that leads me on into FOs. I made a sold off <laughs> uh, I have since been gone knit a sold off I'm going to stand up for you. Um, which was like the most fun thing to knit. I love what it looks like, but it's way too hot to wear it. So I'm going to have to take it off. So I, I made a sold off knit. Um, I'm really, really happy. I was very kindly given this pattern by a lovely podcast viewer called Silky on, uh, I think that's Selkie, uh, I would say, but it's Silky. Uh, on Ravelry who gifted me this pattern and oh my god I'm so in love with it. I'm so in love with how it turned out. Um, it's like these are my kind of favourite colour combinations. It's kind of funny because like the shirt I'm wearing under is black and grey and uh, the shirt I was wearing while knitting on this uh, my friend was over, uh, well my sister-in-law slash friend was over and I was wearing this shirt that is black, grey, wine red <laughs> like a band shirt and it's like do you have a favorite color combination perhaps and I'm like yeah maybe I don't know what makes you think I do uh, but so yeah I made this one um, I 
love it i am totally going to knit more of these because this pattern was so fun and i think it took me i don't know uh, a week of on and off knitting um so fast i'm going to make one in slightly thinner yarn this is a heavy dk and i want to go for a lighter dk weight one um sadly i ran out of the black once i'd done this ribbing it was just I had to like, for binding it off, I had to um, do the last, like that bit with um, fingering weight held double of black because I just ran out. Uh, so I did alter the colours a little bit. I used black and red for this instead of the lightest colour. And then I had to take red for the ribbing on the uh, sleeves because I was out of black yarn and I really wanted to finish it. So there we go, but I think it looks rather nice because it gives this like balance of red in the middle and then black up here and up, down here and up here. Just going to pause the video and take this off because it's so hot. So there we are, <laughs> quick little um, change room of clothes. But yes, uh, I also had to yeah, just show you that because that's something I altered from the pattern as well. Um, I folded the um, neck down because it like turned into one of those half turtleneck, turtleneck things and I really can't stand wearing turtlenecks for some reason. Um, like big, big ones that don't sit like a chokehold I like but ones that are just like up to your neck. It's like I have a problem with with like shirts and sweaters and jumpers that do that as well but it works with this one. I haven't really given it a lot of wear yet because it's been very warm but um, I can't wait to wear this for autumn. But yeah I wanted to wear it throughout the video and just at the end I'm like oh let's talk about the elephant in the room when I've been wearing the, this whole episode but I just cannot. I cannot deal with how warm it is. So I'm sorry it's all that now, but you'll have to wait a few weeks. But yes, thank you so, so much to Selkie for gifting me the pattern. Uh, oh, by the way, this is knit in Panduri yarns. Um, and uh, Panduri yarns on size. The needles that the pattern calls for, I did not swatch but it worked out anyway. I knit the smallest size and um, it is by, in case you've been living under several rocks, uh, by Caitlin Hunter slash Boiler Knitworks. So yeah, that's the one. Um, that is my FO number one for this episode. Uh, I actually have two more. Um, I finished, I cannot, for some reason I can not find my sock pockets. They're gone somewhere on vacation I think, but I finished my toe up socks. Um, which is knit in Shoppawalla, Crazy, Zyberball, in the colour way your blames party. And I think I accidentally made the cuff a slight bit shorter on one of the socks, but you can't really tell once they're on. But I've had this problem lately that I knit the second sock a bit longer or a bit shorter than the other. And this one was probably just because I was tired and wanted them done uh, and wanted to do something else because it's just the same that, that I've taken so much to colour work and like fun patterns and stuff that I'm having a hard time knitting things from just one ball of yarn, straight up just knitting. So, oh there's a flower, part of a flower in there. Um, but yeah, I made these and they're cute. So that's, I did not weave in the edges, uh, the, the ends, the edges. I'm so sorry, I am probably like talking really fast and I forget words, I I'm just... I've had this tub of coffee today, um, some left, not gonna have it because it's cold, um, 
and I am just like coffee. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my second pair of socks that I've finished that have the same problem is they have the same problem for another reason. It's the um, Petty Harbour socks. Oh, by the way, these have no pattern. I made these just straight out of my own head because I wanted to try toe up. I was looking through a bunch of different patterns to like understand how to toe up. But yeah, no pattern for these. Uh, but these, however, um, pattern is Petty Harbour by Rayna Curtis on Ravelry, which is a free pattern. And the second sock um, has the same issue, but by a lot more, but also it's smaller all over because uh, I don't know if you can see, but um, I knit this one like two months ago. There's a hair in it, I'm sorry. Um, and if not more. And this one has been on the needles for a very long time. And my gauge probably, well, apparently got a bit tighter over those couple of months. So, um, yeah. They look kind of dumb with her on, because one is so much shorter. So I'm thinking about doing some sock surgery and just making the cuff a bit longer, because, um, yeah, it's, it's stupid. But overall, I think the pattern turned out really nice. I wish I had my blockers so I could show you, but it's like, if I stretch it out a bit, you'll see what it kind of looks like. So, uh, I made those and they're done and I'm so happy they're done because they've been on the needles for so long and I've been feeling really bad about it and I really wanted like, you know, when I'm one and a half sock in I don't want to give up because you feel dumb doing that, don't you? But yeah, those are my F.O.s for this episode. Now I have a couple of whips. I've got one knitting whip and then I've got one, two, three, three non-knitting whips. So I'm going to start with a knit knitting whip, which is going to be a shorty sock from the leftover of my um, sweater for it frost yarn that I made the cock socks out of. Um, and uh, I was like, mm, I'm going to make another jelly roll pair. And then I was like, nah, nah, want to do something fun. So I'm doing a pico edge. Um, I haven't knitted it down. I'm going to sew it down because I, I feel it, like I cannot. I know how to do it. I just don't like doing it because it takes forever uh, to like knit the edges together. So I like taking like... Uh, leaving a bit longer of a tail and just using that for sewing it in place when I'm done instead. Uh, I think it looks neater when I do that as opposed to knitting it down. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to make it with a an afterthought heel and yeah, I made a little bit of ribbing over the top. So I'm um, going to see how fast I can get through this sock. I think this is about what I need for two of these. Uh, might actually be for three of these but I don't have three feet so I <laughs> don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of it but we'll see. Maybe some contrasting toes and heels or something. I don't know but yeah working on that. Again no pattern I'm just making a sock from the top of my head basically. Um, as you do because socks um, so that's my knitted whip and now I have uh, embroidery. <laughs> I um, it is on a belt. I need to, I should have done this before sitting down but I just, I was just dying to sit down and film honestly. Uh, it's been so long and I just wanted to get it like get myself 
put down on the couch with the camera in my face so I don't just go, oh no, I'm not going to do this. Mm. So, uh, it's half done, <laughs> but I had to leave it like this for being able to use it for medieval week. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole bag apart, finish the embroidery. What do I have in here? Oh, napkins. Um, finish the embroidery and then sew back together again into a little bag. Uh, it's going to have zero light blue in the pattern. So for these, uh, these are going to be the same dark blue and then around the dark blue here or in these it's going to be light green so that's what's going to happen with that uh, this is a brick stitch uh, it's not being cross stitched it's brick stitch um, and I think it's called that because when when you know when you do bricks they're like two and then one over like and then because the stitches sit like that um, the worst at explaining things, but yes, brick stitch, and it's a medieval pattern. Uh, I was going to knit this, no, no, it's not knitted, it's embroidered. I was going to do this with um, wool and yarn on linen, but I had to restart so many times, and there was such a short time frame left, like before we left for medieval weeks, so I just had to cut some corners and get some Ida left and my battery's dying uh, get some Ida and some just cotton yarn um, it's like pearl, cotton pearl yarn uh, by DMC so um, going to make a, a more historically accurate one in the future but yeah I just needed to get it done so I was sitting for three weeks, almost two and a half weeks, constantly working on this. I've watched so many true crime documentaries and like videos on YouTube, like Eleanor Neal. Thank you for getting me through those two weeks. If you like listening to true crime stories, uh, or if you find them interesting, because you don't really like them, do you? Um, she's got a good channel should watch it, um, like, check it out, but anyway, um, <sighs> medieval little bag that's half done, it's going to look better when I finish it, this is going to be a project that's going to take a little, lo little bit longer to finish because I'm, I'm just not going to 9 to 5 embroider because I absolutely destroyed both my wrists doing it and my fingers and I've been in a lot of pain so but it's done and I've given them a break so my hands are feeling a lot better so I can do things again. But I'm going to change batteries so I'll be right back. I have returned and I also found my sock blockers. So I'm just quickly going to show you one of each of the socks on the blockers because I have the blockers. I'm going to take the shorter one. Um, and also I had to open a window so if there's like background noise, uh, it's from outside, but it's kind of early so I don't think anybody's home. Um, that's Petty Harbour by Raina Curtis, and that's the sock, the toe up sock with a three, no, one, two, three, Three by one, I think, rib. Yeah, three by one it is. So yeah. Socks. Yay. But yeah, uh, back to uh, non-knitting content. Um, the next thing I'm working on is, it's inside out, I'm sorry about that, but it's going to be a Viking... Um, not an apron dress, a uh, Viking dress with these straps that you have those buckles on. I don't know what it's called, it's, it's just called a hengsel klenning in Swedish, which is like 
strap dress. So yeah, uh, it is inside out, but and I'm not going to try it on, but it's going to be about up there and then straps and yeah, going to wear a linen underdress probably. Uh, I need to finish this by next weekend. Oops. I need to sit down with this in the week that's coming. So yeah. But I'm, I'm very, very close to done. I've started, this is 100% hand sewn with waxed linen thread with um, felled seams. Uh, I've felled all of the seams down to the hips about down to the hips, uh, I am going to do the um, hem at the top, the bands, and then the, um, sort out how long it's going to be, fell the seams down to where it's cut off, and then hem the bottom, and then it's done. So, um, I can totally do that in a week because I did like all of this, Sewing in two and a half days, I think, including the felling, maybe three days uh, of not constant work. So I adore hand sewing. It's so much fun. Uh, this is a, it's a kind of thick, but kind of thin, um, diamond twill, 100% wool, uh, in uh, obviously wine red and black, because that's me, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I'm, getting, I'm really excited to have this finished. I never thought I'd start, like, Viking, historical Viking sewing, because I'm pretty firmly set in 1300 to 13, no, well, between, like, 1330 to 1385 or something. I'm, I'm very much a 1300s person, uh, but uh, the rest of my friend group, are very into Vikings, so I thought, well, I have this diamond twill that I can't really use for medieval stuff, so I originally bought it last winter. Uh, I think I talked about it on the podcast. Uh, I bought it because I went, wanted to make like a winter coat for like everyday use with like a medieval inspired, well, more like use the medieval dress pattern to make a coat. Um, but I decided why not just use it to make a Viking dress so I can match everybody else. Plus, the we're going to the uh, an event next weekend, which is a Viking themed event. So I wanted something to wear. So um, who doesn't love an arbitrary goal? <sighs> I'm I'm making a dress for an event in a week. Um, but that's me in a nutshell. What's also mean in a nutshell, um, except for having cat slash wool fibres in my eyes, that was a cat hair, not wool, um, is learning to do a new thing by picking not an easy beginner pattern, but a kind of hard pattern. Um, and it's not turning out great so far, but I'm learning, so don't judge me, but I picked up brick uh, no, not brick stitching, tablet weaving, uh, which is, again, a medieval way of doing things, medieval slash viking. Um, so I am making a... <laughs> the pattern isn't really there. It's going to be like a braid. Um, it's got a border on each side, obviously, and then there's going to be a bit, a bit like a um, Celtic knot thing in the middle and I'm not quite there yet because um, while working on this I've been either super sleepy or having wine and I feel like if I'm to learn a new technique I should be not sleepy, not anxious and not drinking wine. Especially not in combination, but it's fun. I'm really, really obsessed with it, and um, it is the right amount of tricky 
uh, and it's just super interesting and I, I, I love it but I hate this yarn <laughs> it, I, I bought this kind of cheap um, cotton cotton yarn to work with to like try and understand the technique before buying slightly more expensive wool yarn um, so basically what you do is you've got this you're weaving it right so you've got this really long oftentimes a lot longer than this uh, piece of uh, the, these yarn bits that's your warp if you're familiar with weaving terms I'm learning so if I'm saying something wrong correct me please but this is basically your warp and then you make I don't know the words in English I just realized I know warp but I don't know the rest and then you've got these cards uh, that you turn to make the threads like switch to from that to that I cannot explain things I'm sorry but it makes sense when you do it and it's not at all hard um, except this pattern is a bit tricky and the it has this technique with like mist holes um, beginner patterns usually have every hole these um, tablets have four holes in them there are tablets with more holes I've never tried that uh, I'm very new to this um, but yeah uh, most beginner friendly patterns have every hole threaded and you turn everything the same way and this one has three out of four holes threaded in the middle pattern and you turn pa tablets different ways so you have to count a lot and um, yeah don't do that when you're very tired but it's fun it's just been way too hot the past few days to really feel okay to sit down and work on this so I hope for some I'm hoping for some slightly warm, uh, slightly less warm weather after this weekend so I can get going with this. So hopefully I have a lot longer of a um, weft next time I'm on here and uh, it's an actual pattern, hopefully. But yeah, that's my newest obsession and I'm once this one is done I'm going to try and an easier pattern because well but that's that's me in a nutshell if I'm to learn something I need to pick something hard otherwise I'm not interested I lose interest so fast I have to pick something tricky so that I can figure it out the hard way uh, and then I can do easy stuff and like enjoy it but if, if it's something that's just boring I need to to be really challenged to feel like this is this is fun to learn. Um, that's me in several nutshells. So yeah, um, for stash enhancements, I actually have stash enhancements. That never happens. Well, uh, all of this was a stash enhancement, but it's all used up. All of this is a stash enhancement, but it's also being used. But I also have stash enhancements that are not being used. So. That's a big box, yes. I'm going to start with the things I actually... So I bought this yarn at the Medieval Market at Medieval Week, which is by Corpse, Corpse the Raven, um, which is a vendor that has fabric the fabric my dress is made out of is from them, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, but I bought this yarn. It was on sale uh, because you had to like uh, fix the colour yourself, uh, which I did. And this was originally a bit lighter, and the purple was a lot warmer. But everything is a lot more blue now. But it doesn't really matter. I think it's really, really pretty. Uh, I have no idea what to do with this because this is not my colour. Uh, I was like, this is the perfect because it's like um, a sport weight, kind of like sport weight. Um, 
is like the perfect yarn for a tenure because it's also like 600 meters or something but I'm not gonna wear a tenure in this color because I'm looking to frog the tenure that it's also a whip but I'm looking to frog it because I just don't want it in that yarn uh, it doesn't turn out the way I wanted to so um, but yeah I have this I caked one yesterday because um, it's like I like this yarn. There's a hair in it. I blame David because it was his hair colour. Um, it's pretty, but I can tell why it's on sale because as I was um, caking it, there were that there's like this part in the middle where where it was like several, you can't see this, but like um, parts that they were just, you know, knotted together, but they came out, the knots came out as probably as I was boiling it uh, and well fixing the colour wasn't really boiling it, but like in hot water with salt and vinegar and stuff, uh, but um, so that there were like several parts in the middle and if you can tell from this one it's it's uh, and also you can tell it when you're uh, sorting it out but um i think it's it's a little bit overspun because <laughs> it, it does these little loops and parts of it is like really weird so um it's it's pretty but i think it's a little bit overspun because it's got a lot of those just parts of it go into a little thing of their own um, but yeah I don't know what to do with this uh, I have no idea what to do with this because it's I, I have 600 meters I want to do something like substantial but it's not a sock yarn it's I don't, I don't know what to do with this I 100% bought it because it was pretty which I really am not allowed to do, but I did anyway. Because um, me being me and all that. But yeah. At least I learned how to fix colour. Colours on yarn. So that's nice. Uh, but I've got that yarn. And then I have some wooden vine yarn in the colourway. Revenge of the Harpsichord, which is just making my heart sing because my dad builds harpsichords and this is super pretty. Uh, I'm really happy to. It's in the Nouveau Bay and Bay, blah blah blah, 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 blah Nouveau base, which is um, I was looking for the yarn content and I read it three times over, but it's 100% super wash merino. I have not gotten it out of the plastic yet because it arrived yesterday. Thank you so much, Kristen. I love it. I need to figure out something really pretty to make this. Um, but first, I really want to show it to my dad because he's going to be he's going to be a bit happy about that. I think. But yeah, uh, my dad builds harpsichord builds harpsichords. I don't know if I've said that, but it's pretty cool. Harpsichords are really pretty. They're a bit late for my. Uh, it's like, I love historical music as well as clothes and reenactment. It's like everything medieval. I'm like, yes, except for possibly the plague, because who likes that? But uh, the music, the clothes, the art, very interesting, very interested in all that. But harpsichords are a little bit late for me, but I still love them because I grew up around them and my dad builds them. And this is a super pretty, super pretty colour. I wonder if I can join in the, if it's still going, um, Caroline of uh, my Carrier's Knitting's gold along, because it's rather golden, isn't it? Anyway, it's pretty. I'm really happy. It's super pretty. Thank you so much. Um, and then, I have a huge, 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 huge thank you and shout out to Ephraim of Ephraim's Knits and Crochet who sent me this enormous box of gifts. Like, dude, thank you. 
you should I know some of you came from this channel um, like the most wonderful friendly gorgeous human being so generous I'm like blown away thank you so much I know some of you came from this channel so welcome I hope you like it here uh, if you did not come from that channel please go check it out because wow I'm, ju I'm just so so blown away uh, it's got some knitting needles and it's got tarot cards I'm like I was crying as I unpacked this because it's just like oh my god I'm so so grateful thank you so much and tea it's got a huge tin of tea I'm like oh tea um, this is I got some tea of life last year for Christmas in a tea swap and I've been it's like one bag left of everyone because I didn't want to finish them I've got more I'm really happy and then there's um, some some notions and cute little so many things um, so many things and so much yarn you guys look I got um, I'm going to start with this one because there's one, two, three, four, five. There's like an entire sweater quantity of this super gorgeous yarn, uh, which is uh, Plymouth Yarn Kudo, uh, which is cotton, rayon, and silk. Super soft. So nice to touch. This is really pretty. And I'm like, wow. So generous. And then there's this gorgeous yarn which is um, merino and um, lyrics which is the sparkly bits I'm guessing which is sort of like Selena but apparently in other kind of sparkles I love sparkly yarn so pretty so pretty and then there's Malabrigo um, which is silk and merino which is also so incredibly pretty look and so soft and there's really cute cotton candy yarn for socks and I'm just like <sighs> thank you so much please anybody who's watching now don't feel like um, you have to send me stuff I I'm genuinely so 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 grateful and happy for this box of gifts I, I cannot express in words how incredibly grateful I am. Thank you so, so much. But, like, please don't feel like anybody has to send me stuff. If you want to, you can. But it's like, you really don't have to. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really, really, really grateful. Thank you so much. <laughs> now I'm like all flustered all over again because it's just uh, I don't know what to do with myself thank you the funny thing with um, tangent and um, this box is really warm because it's full of, full of wool um, tangent with the notions uh, which I have to show uh, is this little thimble ring um, I was this is this is funny actually I was literally this close to buying one just like this at the medieval market because this is apparently uh, I mean this is a bit more modern uh, with how it looks but this is like almost exactly a 1350s thimble and I just saw it in the little box and was like oh my god really <laughs> so th this is like one of the best things of the box is this for me Oh my god, I'm always crying. Um, but it's it's really funny. Um, I was so close to buying one just like this one. And now I, I saw it and I was like, David, it's a medieval thimble! <laughs> David is, is my uh, partner, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, my fiancé. So yeah. Um, I'm so, so grateful and happy. Thank you again so much. Whew. Oh, and there were some really cute pony cookies as well. Um, yeah, those are all things yarn. I think I'm going to go empty the card 
for the not phone. Uh, this is a camera. I'm going to empty the card and come back and talk some more about like life updates and stuff. So uh, if you don't want to hear about that, but still want to hear the outro, you can skip to. Oh well, if I talk about something else as well, because it's not just that. But you can skip to this number. Yes. See you later. Right, so I have returned and I have a little drink because it is warm and I am um, apparently you need more caffeine today. So um, I don't know why but that little break just took all my energy from talking so if I'm a bit like low down now that's that's why. Uh, sometimes that happens, it's like I have super high energy and then I just which is kind of what I'm about to talk about, but yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention that I have not touched on on my Instagram because that's also been kind of not um, not active uh, this almost whole summer, but um, again, unless you've been living under several rocks, um, you probably have seen that there's been quite a bit happening within the knitting community when it comes to the sock petition situation and all that and I just want to make it clear uh, that I want everybody to feel welcome on my channel and um, I am 100% in support of the BIPOC community when it comes to that thing I think what they did, uh, Sock and his uh, partner absolutely horrendous and yeah I, I feels like it's it's late to talk about that situation but it's never late to talk about like white privilege and stuff and uh, I have a lot of thoughts about this and it's hard to put into words uh, but like, the general consensus is as white people we have to be so aware of our privilege and work with that constantly because like it's so ingrained in us to think certain ways and you have to constantly challenge that and if somebody tells you off that hey this is not okay you should not be thinking or talking this way and saying these things because um, you're upholding white privilege and white supremacy you have to take a step back and realize that maybe you are and own that and make changes to better yourself uh, so <laughs> if I ever do that please let me know uh, but I try to I, I want to try and like be as best as I can um, I don't know uh, I don't want to sound um, on a high horse or anything. I try to be aware of, of my privilege and I want everybody to feel safe and welcome here. I hope this doesn't sound like I'm saying it for brand new points or anything because I really am not. I just have been wanting to say something but I've been wanting to say on camera. Um, could have said something on my Instagram whilst everything went down but like I said uh, there's always you know, you, this is not something that should be talked about only when something happens. You always have to be aware of your privilege and you always have to work against racism, uh, not just when something happens. Um, <laughs> which is also, uh, you know, white privilege in action because something, uh, something happens and then everybody's talking about it and then once it's not going on anymore, oh, it's not a big deal anymore, is it? Nothing's happening. Nobody's being upset, nobody's doing something wrong, so we can all just go about our business. No, we always have to talk about it. We always have to think about our privilege and challenge our privilege and privileged thinking. Um, that's kind of what I 
uh, I've been wanting to say about that in as few words as I can because otherwise I'm going to sit here forever and just not get my point across because um, I'm, I'm bad at getting my point across when it comes to things. I'm, get, I'm bad at getting my point across eloquently when it comes to things. I think Geordie Mitz has said very many good things about this. Uh, if you don't know what the situation was about um, either, you should go back and watch her videos on it. Uh, and um, uh, Caroline of Dundonit slash Vicarious Knitting has been talking about it and the person whom the incident happened to has been talking about it on her Instagram but I don't know if it's still on private uh, but she's witchcrafted lady on Instagram Almas um, and yeah uh, it's important to talk about and I wanted to make it clear where I stand on it I want this to be a place for everybody and I want to be shut up phone um, I want to be as inclusive as I can um, so yeah um, that's that little bit of conversation uh, now I'm going to get into life update which is going to include um, it feels weird just transitioning from that to something else but <laughs> like I, I really wanted to say something about it so um, and I hope nothing in that came out wrong um, I'm really sorry if it did. I'm not good with words, but I think, I hope it didn't come out wrong. Hello, editing shy here. Um, I just wanted to add to what I said about, um, also sorry about my lipstick, sorry about my general frazzled look at the moment, um, mid-editing, but I wanted to add to that I said that if I do something wrong, uh, say something wrong, feel, uh, like, call me out on it, and I want to, because then I want to, like, take a step back and do something about it. Um, I wanted to add that um, with white privilege and all that, we should not expect the BIPOC community to educate us um, on it. It's, it's like we have to educate ourselves as well. Um, take criticism when you're given it and if you're being like, if somebody calls you out on something, take it to heart, see where you went wrong, but don't expect them to educate you where you can educate yourself, because that's not their job. Um, that's, uh, as with any, um, sorry, I, I, feel, I look terrible, as with any marginalised groups, um, they should not have to educate you on the struggles you put them through. Um, I hope I put that in words in a good way and um, that's something I wanted to add so because I felt like if I just say if I do something wrong please tell me what I'm doing wrong I don't mean that I mean um, if I'm doing something wrong without realizing it shout at me and I'll have a look at it and yeah um, basically that um, yeah that's all editing shy had to say. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry if that came out weird. Um, yeah, back to the video. <laughs> so, but um, it feels weird transitioning from that into something else. Uh, I kind of wanted to end this on that, so, but I have to also update on what's been going on and why I have these breaks and 
and life in general because it's like if you don't want to see this um timestamp you should jump to there <laughs> so um I know I start a lot of episodes with saying, oh, it's been very up and down and life is crazy and it's been an emotional roller coaster, but it's because it always is. Um, and if you've followed me, the, oh, why am I so nervous? Um, if you've followed me online, like from my old channel and on Instagram, and if you know me in real life, uh, and also if you've followed me on here, because it's been almost a year, so yeah, you've seen a bit of up and a bit of down, and um, you know that I have quite a few things um, that I deal with. So, oh yeah, um, totally forgot with with like the timestamp and everything. I should have added a trigger warning for talking about uh, mental illness, like uh, depression, anxiety. Um, BPD, uh, eating disorders, all of that fun stuff, um, things that come with that. Um, so yeah, uh, if you don't want to hear anything about that, you should just skip forward. Um, again, timestamp, uh, yeah. So, um, so I've, I've been talking about being in uh, Avels again for my mental health and what's going on with me because I've, I've spent almost two years in therapy for CPTSD uh, which I did not get to finish. Uh, we kind of left off just as I was able to start talking about things which has been super difficult to deal with because everything is just like very very present at the moment and I have no one to talk to because um, after that there was a long while until I got my uh, psychologist for these evaluations um, but they wanted to evaluate something I've been asking for for many years now uh, which is quiet borderline personality disorder and my new psychiatrist thought, of course, well, that's a good idea because that might be something to look into, looking at you and your files, um, finally. So I quite quickly, for once, because last time I was about to do evaluations past depression, um, like for my anxiety, and they did an evaluation for ADD and autism, which I don't have, but I do have anxiety and generalised anxiety disorder. Uh, but um, the last time it, it was like a year of waiting for a psychologist, but this time it took maybe one and a half months. And now the vows have been kind of quick. Um, I've seen her maybe two times a month. It's, it's been very little talking uh, and that's the only thing I've had. So I've just been in this really bad place where all of my trauma is up in the air from just leaving it like that from therapy and um, evaluating mental disorders. It's very Rating. It's hard, uh, and having nobody to talk to, uh, no counselling, is not making things better. So it's it's just been sorry. There's uh, the, the postman is outside. Uh, it's mail is on time today at least. Anyway, it's been s not even slowly, it's just been going downhill with, with me lately because um, all of the bad stuff has been triggered so um, very heavily relapsed with 
the only thing I can control, which is my eating. So um, that thing is in like back in style right now. Apparently, that that thing is back. Um, vengeance. It's been it's been under control for a long time, and it's been it's been a, no, it hasn't. But I've been eating, and now it's it's in control, but in the wrong way. Uh, and uh, I might not talk about that, but it's like um, with I've just been in a really really bad place with zero energy, which is like the main reason I haven't been filming is because I just feel like I can't sit down and talk. I have no no um, energy. I did join the gym. And I kept it up for for a while, but I just have no energy. I can't go out. I get super anxious. I can't do anything, and um, I'm just struggling a lot. And now, last time I was at the psychologist, we did actually finish the BPD eval, and uh, yeah, <laughs> as I thought, I have it. So um, it's not so strange that I am struggling so much. Um, not to in any way sound like a victim or anything, but um, the thing with it is that maybe things should have been handled differently with um, therapy and counselling and stuff because It's, it's been a struggle to stay here, so to speak. Um, and it still is. It's, it's just not just a has been. It's, um, it is uh, very much, um, yeah, uh, heavy, <laughs> very much heavy very much want to quit and um, it's not fun to say. Uh, I try to hang on to uh, what I have, like I have very good friends, I have a wonderful husband, I've got you guys in this channel which is bringing me joy immensely. I've been missing talking to you um, but yeah. Um, it is a struggle and uh, things around me have happened and made it more of a struggle. Nothing with David, we're fine, we're absolutely fine. Um, he's back at work now though so I have a lot of alone time. I am so happy they decided to <laughs> release um, uh, World of Prop Classic because I've been super heavily into that the past couple of days, it's so much fun. But, um, yeah, uh, so in case I have these very long breaks from filming, um, it is 100% related to me just plain not being able to sit down and talk because I'm probably in bed because I'm feeling bad. Um, so yeah, but it's like, I'm glad I have this, um, I finally have confirmation that I have this thing that I've been thinking that I have for so long. Um, I'm, I'm not pro self-diagnosing, but, you know. You, you can suspect that you have something without it being self-diagnosis, in my opinion. And I've been trying to get this evaluation for a long time and I got it. Uh, but I still have no counselling. Uh, I'm seeing the same psychologist next week for like a follow-up and then I'll, I'm seeing my psychiatrist in September. And I have had no counselling or therapy or anything of the sort since the first two weeks in April and it's just off. It's
it's it's just a struggle. I I don't know. Um, it's it's too much. Um, because I want, I don't want to burden David, and I, I don't want to, uh, and it's just, you know, not really stuff that's happening, it's just my brain not functioning the way it's supposed to, you know, it's, it's not, I'm sad because this and that happened, or, um, it's not really existential dread even though the, the world is in a state at the moment and I really don't want to talk about it because it makes it all worse for me but um, it, it's not that, it's just I just plain don't want to, you know? and plain just feel like shit all the time because that's what my brain does and there's not really anything to talk about about it except for the trauma thing being all over the place and I yeah David can't really do the therapist thing because he's not a therapist naturally so um yeah but yeah this is this is dark and heavy but that is what's been going on um there, there's just a lot of a lot of crying a lot of having to wear sleeves a lot of not eating, a lot of just trying to hold on basically. Um, so I keep busy with crafting, I keep busy with World Warcraft uh, and I keep busy with the feeling bad about not filming because I want to film and I know it makes me feel better to sit down and talk even if it's like not about anything um, mental health related it's it's uh fun to talk about my knitting and stuff like that but yeah um sometimes i just can't handle it but yeah this was this was difficult um so yeah i'm so i'm sorry about that big lump of um depressiveness i don't want anybody to feel sorry for me uh, it's not why I'm talking about it, it's, it's because I want to be transparent about what's going on and why I just take unannounced breaks and then just don't say anything about it until I'm suddenly back um, and I didn't want to just be back from something like this, it's like it's not even over uh, I just really wanted to film a video <laughs> so I pushed through and here we are um, but um, I, I just don't want to come back to the internet like nothing happened um, maybe looking different, maybe um, you know I, I don't want to do that without having at least a little bit of a word about why because this is another thing I think is extremely important to talk about is mental health and destigmatizing it um, so yeah it's, it's something I've always done on my old channel and have sort of been doing on this one as well um, just touching on it basically but like updating where I am mentally and if you don't want to hear it you, you can skip because I will always from now on because apparently um, this is the worst I've been in, in a very long time we're talking years this is the worst I've been in years so um, if I talk about this again in in upcoming videos I will probably <laughs> have timestamps again for people who just don't want to hear it so um, yeah that's um, that's that but yeah um, sorry about that uh, things that are happening in my life at the moment is the Viking market next weekend so I need to finish the dress. I do not need to finish the bag because it's not Viking age. Um, finish the dress uh, and that is about the only thing that's happening um, as far as I know at the moment. Might go visit my parents next week. Um, thinking about doing that and autumn is coming along slowly but surely which I can't wait for I'm so done with summer. I don't like, 
I don't like the heat at all. I hate being warm. I like being warm from many layers. I don't like being warm when you have zero layers. Most of the days I've been just sitting around in my underwear and I'm dying because it's so hot. I just cannot handle it. I hate it. So I'm really looking forward to autumn. Um, and yeah, uh, again, a huge, huge thanks to Ephraim's Knit and Crochet for sending me that wonderful package. And a huge thank you to Silky for giving me the Sold Upner pattern. Um, and again, a huge, huge thank you to all the newbies and the returning viewers for being here. Um, I'm so happy that you want to watch this channel and will woe me. <laughs> oh, God, I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is terrible. I really should script my things in the future, but is that going to happen? No, it's not because it's me. I'm being on brand with my channel. No show notes except for the ones that I write after the episode in the description box. Um, I've got no cows that I'm in. Yeah, I've got the box of socks, but I don't know if I'll finish that. Uh, I'm in the box of socks cow. I could have entered this into the Year of the Garmin cow. Both are by Willembein. Um, but that's the only cow. I was going to enter the Forest City Knit Girl sock cow, but that didn't happen and I, um, nah, it's, it's not going to happen, it's only like, it's September in two days and I think it ends on the 1st or 5th or something and it's just not going to happen, so I'm going to have to join another cow of theirs at some point. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for cows I should be looking into, um, leave a suggestion or any patterns you think I should knit um, as well. Uh, yeah, I think that is it. I don't, I didn't buy any fabric this year at the Devil Week, so I don't have any fabric hauls. I did buy Hannah and Indigo hair dye, but I didn't get around to that yet, so. That's going to happen soon. I um, can't wait to have my hair black again, and I'm debating on on cutting my bangs back in again because I miss them. I feel like I just feel like I look boring at the moment with, but I think it's going to be better once my hair is black again because I I just feel so boring with really long brown hair and just not even a fringe. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. Also, I've had requests for bullet journal videos. I was going to make one for planning out August, but that didn't happen. We'll see if I can get around to making one for September. It's probably going to come up a bit like into September in that case. Otherwise, I'm just going to make one for October because I really need to get back into bullet journaling because I've not touched it since probably the start of July. I think I did half of July and then I've just left it because I I have not been able to handle doing anything. But now that David's back at work and things are rolling, like starting to roll again with, with uh, psychiatrist visits and stuff, I, I really need a calendar. Uh, I feel like I sound very monotonous at the moment. It kind of killed the last bit of my energy to talk about the issues I have. Um, sorry um but yeah uh that is that is probably it for this episode and it's a lot longer than i usually film so i'm, I'm sorry this is such a long episode i was going to ask on instagram if you guys wanted like a mental health update video separate from this video but i, I felt like no i need to put everything in the same one because otherwise it's not going to happen um Because, yeah, my brain. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's that for this episode. Uh, so I will see you again as soon as I can. Um, I'm not going to say next week because then it's not happening. But maybe. 
maybe next week, maybe in two weeks, maybe in a month, we'll see. Um, it entirely depends on what happens now, but yeah. Sorry about being so absent. I am trying to to get them to give me a counsellor so I can get my life in order a bit more because it's it's very chaotic, very chaotic, and I'm not happy about it. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so so much for watching and being here. Uh, as usual, any video suggestions or pattern or anything suggestions, or if you want to comment something, comment on something I've been talking about or anything, talk to me. Uh, you can either comment down below in the comments or shoot me a message uh, if you want to talk privately on Instagram linked in the show notes in the description box or in on Ravelry uh, which is also linked below um, so yeah also thanks to everybody who's been adding me as a friend on Ravelry I really appreciate that <laughs> um, so yeah uh, that is that uh, again thank you I hope you enjoyed this episode even though it had a certain heavier topics at the end um, but I felt that both of them needed to be talked about so yeah thank you again so so much for watching and I will see you again as soon as I can have a lovely weekend and a lovely week and however long after that it takes for me to film the next video and I will see you again soon <laughs>